stand to lead me, I will never, never fear. Danger cannot fright me if my Lord is near. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus anywhere, everywhere I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus everywhere he leads me, I would follow. Close beside my Savior would my soul ever keep. He will lead me safely in the path that he has trod. Up to where they gather on the hills of God. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Anywhere, everywhere, I would follow on. Follow, follow, I would follow Jesus. Everywhere he leads me, I would follow. So let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father God, Lord, we thank you um, for allowing us to be in your house this evening. Father, we thank you uh, for the fact that we can follow you through your word, through your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask that you would be with us now, communicate to us the thing you would have us to hear from your word. Father, help us to know how to pray so that we can praise your name for the answers. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. 413. Faith is the victory. Just show it by faith. And kept along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise and press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies. Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled. Faith is the victory we know that overcomes the world. Sing it out. Faith is the victory. swept on or every field the faith by which they conquered death is still our shining shield faith is the victory faith is the victory oh glorious victory that overcomes the world to him who overcomes the foe white raiment shall be given before the angels he shall know his name confessed in heaven. Then onward from the hills of light our hearts with love aflame. We'll vanquish all the hosts of night in Jesus' conquering name. Faith is the victory, faith is the victory. about our faith. It's amazing how God puts so much emphasis and so much power uh, on our faith to believe in Him. Two, two letters tonight. Uh, first of all, let me read to you from the Warrens in Alaska. Uh, I wonder how warm it is in Alaska right now. Jesse, you used to live in Alaska. Here it is, middle of May. Does it warm up yet? Maybe a little bit? 20 below at night during the day, yeah, Whew. okay. Well, this is what he has to say. His family is in Alaska. He says, this winter is the longest and coldest that we have ever experienced in the five winters that we have spent in St. Mary's, as well as the deepest snowfall. Everyone is ready for springtime. We will probably have the highest water since the early 1990s when breakup arrives due to the thick ice and deep snow, according to the elders in the village. The church land did not flood then, so Lord willing, it won't this year either. Remember, he's in St. Mary's, way at the top of Alaska. We've decided to cancel our furlough for September through December of this year, as the village is still only allowing residents of St. Mary's to fly to and from the village. 
So the family that was coming from Wyoming to fill the pulpit for us cannot come. And I do not want to preach by conference call over the phone to my congregation for four months. We will plan on coming down October of 2022 to January of 23 for our next furlough, furlough, Lord willing. In the first part of March, my wife got a phone call from Kim Folk informing her that her father had gone in for a heart catheter. It was found out that he needed to get an open heart surgery as soon as possible. They were not letting him leave the hospital until he had the operation done. Scrambling like crazy, we were able to get her and the kids down to Florida to visit with her father the day before surgery, which was a big blessing. They had to rebuild all of the chambers of his heart, do a quadruple bypass, which is a lot, of, lot more than they expected to do. Thankfully, he came through all right and is recovering well. A big thanks to everyone who prayed and everyone who helped get my family down to Florida. After 24 hours of flying, traveling over 5,000 miles by plane, Rebecca and the kids landed safely in Florida. I did not leave immediately with the rest of the family, waiting until the end of March to leave to fly down and help out with some things from my father-in-law. I had hoped by the end of March the below zero weather would be over, but this was wishful thinking. As the cold weather has lasted longer than usual this year, it is not good to leave a building unoccupied during really cold weather. The pipes can freeze easily or the fuel oil stoves go off during a power outage and not reset when the power comes back on. Ministering and witnessing to the community continues unabated in the midst of the coronavirus and uncertain political climate while helping pick axe a grave for an elder who passed away in March. So they, they're burying people in March. You have to use a pickaxe to dig the grave because it's so solid thick. You know, I, I knew someone, my brother-in-law lives in Maine, and he said they would not bury anyone who died during the wintertime. They'd wait till the thaw. You would think. He says they pickaxed this so they could bury the guy. Okay, so they were pickaxing a grave for an elder who passed away in March. I thought about the Bible verse on a person who dies without believing on Christ as their Savior. So sobering thoughts indeed. Death waits no, for no man. Looking around at the other nine men who were helping pick, pickaxe for nine hours through frozen tundra and layers of rock. I felt a great burden for their souls that the Lord tarries and this beat up old body of mine will last another 30 years or so. I pray they will all get saved, baptized and discipled. I know the Lord will deal with their hearts. Please pray they respond to my witnessing and preaching and the wooing of the Holy Ghost from Brother Israel. A lot going on in his life, that's for sure. So keep on praying for him. This is the Roberos. Remember, they're in Brazil and it's been locked down pretty tight. He says, Philippians 2.13, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. The Lord willing, we will return to the States on June 14th for a short furlough, so just a couple weeks away. We'll begin immediately to visit our supporting churches. We already have several meetings scheduled. Praise the Lord, besides sharing what the Lord has done during our last term in Brazil, Ram will be presenting his brand new daily devotional, Daily Wisdom for Modern Times. We hope to be a huge blessing to you and to be renewed in our faith as well. Please pray for our protection as we leave Brazil in less than a month. We plan to be vaccinated for COVID-19 as soon as we land in the States where we'll drive over 40,000 miles over the next months. Meanwhile, Ram will continue to produce his daily broadcast for BBN International to conduct his discipleship courses on Google Meet. By the way, we are still looking for a place, preferably already furnished, in the Greenville, South, Car South Carolina area for furlough. All the offerings we received during this furlough will be applied towards the construction of the sixth church of our ministry. This church, located in a poor, heavily populated area, is growing numerically and spiritually. We need to raise about $110,000. We're expected of having a sweet time of fellowship with the supporting churches once again. Thank you so much for your love towards us. He has a side note here. This past month, Agnaldo Arauo. A dynamic Rock of Ages missionary passed away due to COVID. He helped, he, he helped us found Maranatha Baptist Temple of Ribeiro Preto in the southeast of Brazil, where we are currently serving the Lord. Kleber, 
a friend to whom Agnaldo had been witnessing was deeply touched at the funeral. At the thought of meeting the Lord Jesus face to face with a clear conscience, he has been attending church since then. Please pray for his salvation. So this man named either Kleber or Kleber um, to be saved. All right. So let's pray, shall we? Father, thank you for the many, many answers to prayer for Brother Israel Warren, for his wife to make it down uh, to Florida to be with her daddy. We thank you so much for helping that to go well, and then the surgery was successful. Lord, thank you for the many answers to prayer. We also pray, Father, for Israel, and as they return back to Alaska, we ask for a special amount of grace and blessing to them as they have had a very difficult winter, and then COVID on top of that. We pray that things would be able to get back to normal for them as soon as possible. And Lord, bless their ministry. God, we pray for the Riberos. Thank you that they could come home, uh, at least to the States, for their furlough. Give them special safety as they travel. We pray that there would be no adverse reactions because of this vaccine. We pray that you'd help them, Lord, and then bless them. We pray especially for the raising the funds for this new church building they need to build. And then for this man that's been mentioned that he needs to be saved, we pray that you would help him to remember the things he's heard and the preaching of the gospel that stirred his heart and that he would yield and trust Jesus as a Savior. So, Lord, thank you. Thank you for our church and the faithful giving that uh, we have seen. We pray that we continue to be faithful to give for our missions program. In Jesus' name we pray now. Amen. All right, let's take our Bibles, and I'm going to share with you out of Hebrews chapter 11. All right, what comes to your mind when we say Hebrews 11? Anybody? The Hall of Faith. That's right. For those of you that aren't familiar with the book of Hebrews, Hebrews is written to Jewish people, for the most part, Jewish Christians. And then as you read Hebrews chapter 11, the writer of Hebrews takes the time to now apply one of the most important topics for the Christian. And he uses Hebrew history to explain how it all works. And that is all sum up, summed up in one word, faith, faith. And we just sang the song, faith is the victory that overcomes the world. I mentioned this to you a moment ago as well, that God puts so much emphasis on faith. Why does he do that? Why does he put so much emphasis on faith? Interesting, isn't it? In the Old Testament, he says the, the just shall live by faith. New Testament says the same thing. The just shall live by faith. Why so much emphasis on faith? So, so often in our life today, we don't like to emphasize faith. What do we always say? Well, when I see it, I'll believe it, right? We always say stuff like that. I'm not going to believe it until I see it with my own eyes. And yet God told another disciple that said that, unless I see him and touch his side and feel the scars with my own hands, I will not believe that Jesus rose again. And then Jesus said, don't be doubting. Who is he talking to? Thomas. But be believing. And then he said, blessed are those who have not seen yet what? belief. Why does God put so much emphasis on faith? It's a powerful thing, isn't it? For one, we can't see God, can we? So we have to believe in God that we cannot see. It's all about faith. It's about faith. So let's take a look at a few verses. You're in Hebrews chapter 11. Let's look at verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it faith, talking about faith, by faith the elders received a good report or obtained a good report, meaning all those Old Testament guys, Noah, Moses, Abel, Abraham, 
Joseph, all these Old Testament elders obtained a good report. How? By their faith. We honor them today because of the faith they had. Okay. So how does that relate to me? Keep reading verse 3. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And stop right there. So I want to share with you tonight something that I still am working on in my Christian life. I've been saved a long time. I've been preaching a long time. And I want to increase my faith. I have not obtained the status of faith that I want to have. I want to have faith to move mountains. That's what Jesus said. If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you'll be able to look at that mountain and say, be cast into the sea, and it will be cast into the sea. I don't have that kind of faith. I want to have that kind of faith. I want to have faith beyond what I have right now. And all of you have faith. You all do, even if you're not saved. Some of you that may not even be saved have faith in something. You believe in something. But as a believer, we all have faith. But how much? What is the degree of faith that you have? And tonight's message is to help you, okay, in a simple way, to endeavor to increase your faith. To realize the power and then the step-by-step -step progress, how you can increase your faith. Okay? And this is where I am today, what I'm trying to do as well. So let me give you three things. We'll be done. Number one, faith causes the invisible to be visible, right? Step one, faith causes invisible things to be visible to you. That's really the simple thing. Invisible to be visible. So go back to verse one. Faith is a substance of things that are hoped for, the evidence of things that are not seen. This is the invisible. They're not seen. So something that's not seen has become reality, a substance to you. Even though you can't see it, I believe it to be true. That's faith. It's physical matter, a tangible, solid presence in your mind. You choose to believe something that you cannot see. Now, everybody has done that. Do you remember growing up, and you remember the, uh, the old child nursery rhyme story called Peter Pan? Remember that? Peter Pan. What could Peter Pan do, everybody? I can fly. Remember that? Now, you remember, though, when... He first met, what's her name? Wendy. And remember they were scattering the dust. And what did they, he say? You have to believe. You have to believe you can fly. You have to believe. And remember there's been renditions of Peter Pan where Peter lost his belief. Remember that one? I think the Robin Williams one. And he could no longer believe. And they said, come on, Peter, you can do it. You can do it. You can fly. Believe, Peter. Believe, Peter. And he believed it. And guess what? He flew. We understand this concept is what I'm trying to tell you. Everybody does. Everybody understands a concept. Even though you can't see it tangibly, you believe it to be true and maybe it'll happen. That's faith. That's the simple definition of faith. A woman who says, ah, in my mind I can see... That guy proposing to me, I see him getting on his knee, and I see him proposing. I see the ring in his hand. I believe it to be true. And she has faith that one day she's going to be married. Women do that all the time. Muslims, what do they believe? Well, they believe that if they shoot and kill and destroy Christians and Jews, then they will be honored in martyrdom, they say, with a thousand wives when they get to their bygone day, I guess. But they believe, don't they? They have a lot of faith in Allah. So we have faith. Everybody has that kind of faith. And here's the thing. What God is telling us, though, because we are basing our understanding upon the truths of God's Word, not upon Peter Pan, not upon the Muslims, not about some fanciful thing. Our faith is based on something that God has said. That's the substance. So, okay, I say, all right, I believe God's Word. 
And because I believe God's word, the invisible thing is I'm making tangible to me. I believe that there is a God. Everybody say amen. amen. See, a lot of pe there's people in this world that say I don't believe in a God. I say I believe in a God. I believe in the one God. By faith, I can't see Him, but because I see what His Word is, says, I choose in my mind to take the invisible and then make it real to me by faith. I believe in God. How many believe in God? Say amen. amen. You believe in God. That's faith. You have faith. You haven't seen God, but you believe in God. Congratulations, you've gotten step one. You have taken the invisible and made it visible to you. You made it real to you. And that is exactly what these guys did. For instance, as you keep reading down through there, look at verse 4. By faith, Abel offered to God an excellent sacrifice than Cain. What did Abel do? Well, he believed in God who he could not see. And then he offered a sacrifice to a God he could not see. He took the invisible and made it visible. That was his faith. The same thing. Enoch did the same thing. He believed in a God he could not see, and then that God translated him up into heaven. We can go on. What about Noah? Noah built an ark for a, a rainstorm that he never knew would ever happen. But he did what God said to him. He believed it, and then it became the reality. The invisible became visible. So that's why God says in verse 6, now look at verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's God. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is. And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now hear it now. Watch now. We're going to get to step two. Step one is saying, I'm going to take the invisible and make it visible to me. The things, I don't know how this world came to be. All the stuff around me, but I believe that God simply made it when He said He made it that way. Let there be. So I am by faith taking the invisible and making it real to me. Believing it. That's faith. Step two. So step one, making the invisible visible to you or real to you. Step two Faith creates a passionate devotion. So step one, cause of the invisible to be visible. You've done that. All of you probably have done that. You believe in a God. You believe in a Jesus. You've never seen Him. But He died on the cross for you. You believe Him by faith and now you are saved. But now step two, this is where all the Christians that are over here, you know, in this place, part of life that never really grow. They just kind of stay right there. I believe in God. I believe in Jesus. And that's it. They never do anything else. They don't increase their faith. They pray, but eh, every now and then a prayer gets answered. But a lot of times God doesn't hear, doesn't even answer their prayer. So they're Christian They've gotten to step one. They believed in a God. They believed in Jesus and trusted that he died on the cross for them and then believed that and they got saved. Hallelujah. I'm preaching to the Wednesday night crowd, meaning you're not just step one. You should be asking, Lord, increase my faith. This is step two. As we continue in our faith, in our progress of faith, our faith is more than just making the invisible visible. Step two is taking faith and it creates a passion of devotion. That's what Hebrews 11 is all about. It's not just the invisible becoming visible. It's creating a passionate devotion to God. Let me show you. Take a look at Hebrews 11 again. See, God is looking for those whose heart is perfect toward him. And so as we read down through this passage of Scripture, you know what we start seeing? We start seeing like verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for inheritance, notice the next word, obeyed. He went out not knowing whether he went. By faith, he sojourned in the land of promise in a strange country. 
See, all of these people, you know what they did? They believed God by faith, but then their faith grew and said, not only do I believe God that He's there, not only do I believe God is my Savior, but passion and devotion was part of their faith. And they said, now I believe in a God, and because of my belief, I am compelled to serve that God. I have a devotion for that God. See how faith grows? I'm trying to be careful here so you understand this. God's looking for those whose heart is perfect toward Him. 2 Chronicles 16, 9 says, For the eyes of the Lord are running to and fro through the whole earth to show Himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward Him. Now, let's talk about David for a minute. David in the Old Testament was a young man, maybe 16, 17 years of age. And he loved God. He believed God. He took the invisible and made it visible. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. We have those wonderful passages of Scripture. Then one day, this David who made the invisible God visible to him, okay, by faith, he went down to the battlefield, down to the valley of Elah. Saul was there. Jonathan was there. Abner was there. The brothers of David were there. And then on the other side of the valley, there was an almost 10-foot-tall giant named Goliath. Everybody say Goliath. Goliath was there. Okay. So here is Goliath on one side of the mountain. And as he's over here crying out uh, and mocking the Israelites, crying out, Give me a man! No one in the army would even come out to fight against Goliath. But here's David now. David believed God. He made the invisible God visible to him. He's real to me. But it didn't stop right there because Saul believed in God as well. Jonathan believed in God. Abner believed in God. For heaven's sake, thousands of Israelites believed in God. But who had a passion of devotion for that God? It was David. David said, I believe God. I can't stand here and do nothing. So his faith created a passionate devotion for God. Hence, we have half of the Psalms is written by David crying out in love for God. And so what does he do? He goes down to the valley of Elah, picks up the smooth stones, and he kills Goliath in the name of God. How? By faith. That's in Hebrews 11, by the way. By faith he did that. We know that Moses did the same thing in chapter 11, verse 25. See, Moses, he believed in a God. Oh, I made God, I, the invisible became visible to me. I believe God, but what else? He had a passionate devotion for God. So in verse 25, look at Hebrews eleven twenty-five. 25. He chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. His faith grew. It wasn't just about, I believe in a God. I believe. no. He had a passion for God. That means that faith, which is step one, now has become a passionate devotion. I will choose to suffer affliction with the people of God. You see how it grew? It went from one to the next step. I will suffer affliction for the people of God. David said, I'll fight Goliath. Moses said, I'll suffer affliction. All the way through, the Bible says in chapter 11, verse 36, there was cruel mockings, scourgings, bonds, imprisonments. When some were stoned, sawn asunder, slain with a sword. These did not receive the promise they looked for and made visible in their life. So again, so again, they trusted God. They never saw the actual visible promise come to fruition to them. But they believed it, and they were devoted to God. Now, <clears throat> I'm preaching to the Wednesday night crowd. That tells me you've already gotten to step two, most of you. What do I mean by that? Why are you here? Why are you here? You believe God, that's enough to get you here on Sunday morning, right? What's the, what, what is Wednesday for? A passionate devotion for God. Not only do you believe in God for salvation, you also believe God can hear and answer prayer. You also believe that God's going to bless you because you come and pray. See, now you're here. You said no to something else on Wednesday night, so you could be here. That is a devotion to God. That's step two. God bless you, you know. 
So here you are. Now, you still may be early in step two, but you're here. <laughs> Every time on Wednesday night, brother, I, when people walk in, I'm like, hallelujah, there's another one. Hallelujah, there's another one. The Wednesday night crowd's growing. Let's, that, Wednesday night should be the crowd, but it's not. You know what the crowd is? Sunday morning. Why? Because that's the easiest thing to do. It's the by faith. And by the way, I'm glad people come on Sunday morning. That shows their faith in a God and wanting to be here. But those that go beyond just believing, the sacrifice of coming on a Wednesday night, that's a passion. Okay? A little bit more. So we see that through Hebrews 11 as well. All the way down through there. Their faith created a passionate devotion where you say, you know what? I'm going to be here because I love God. It's not, it's not just enough to believe. I love Him and I want to I please Him. By the way, that's why I get up every morning and read my Bible. Amen? Why do I do that? Because I love the Lord. That's why I say no to the flesh. I'm, I'm tempted like anybody's tempted. I could click on the wrong thing on my computer or on my phone. But I say no. Why? Because I love the Lord. I have a passionate devotion. My faith went from in, seeing the invisible to making it visible, but now I have a passion for God. I'm not going to look at that. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to commit immorality. I'm not going to do that. Why? Why aren't you going to do that? Come on, everybody's doing it. Because I believe in a God, and now I have a passion for that God. Step two. And I believe the Wednesday night crowd is an example of step two. And so let me move on. Step three. Beyond simply making the invisible to be visible and beyond creating a passion for God, step three culminates, are you ready? In complete sacrifice to God. Step three is where your faith has gone from simple believing that which is invisible to be real. It's gone from that to having a passion for God because all of you here have that. That's why you're here. What's step three? It culminates in a sacrificial surrender or service to God. It says, I will give my life. See, coming on Wednesday night, I, okay, that's great. Glad you're here. Praise the Lord. Amen. But step three says, I no longer own my life. My life belongs to Christ. And I will give my life to Him. That's step three. Whatever He wants. Believing Christ in such a way that it produces such service in your life that it reflects a surrendered attitude towards Christ. Let me, let me just finish this up real quick. Turn to John chapter 14. Let me show you this. Someone asked me tonight, how are you doing? And I've been meditating all this on day, through the day, and I said, I'm trying to increase my faith. And this is what I meant. Notice John 14, Jesus is speaking to his disciples, and he says, you believe in God, believe in me. And then jump down to verse 9. He says to Philip, have I been so long time with you, and yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father, and how sayest thou then, show us the Father? Notice what he says, believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He's doing the works. Now watch. Jesus is saying, do you believe this? That the works that I'm doing, that you all see? Remember the time I walked on the water? Yeah. Remember the time that I raised the dead? Uh-huh. You remember the time that we fed the 5,000? Remember all that? That's the Father. Because of my devotion my faith in my Father, these works are happening in me. That's what he's saying. Look at verse 11. Verse 10 again. 
Believest now thou that I am the Father, and, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. He does the works. Okay. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say unto you, now look, he that believeth on me. Here's your faith. The works that I do shall he do also. Greater works than these shall he do, because I go to my Father. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I'll do it. Now, right, now let me finish this up. Third step is taking the invisible, making it visible, real to you. I believe. But then having a passion, the faith that you have is now a passionate devotion for God. But step three is allowing your faith to grow in such a way that your sacrifice and surrender to Jesus himself now brings you to a point where you are doing the very works that he did. That's what he said. The works that I do shall you do also. That's why I said I, I'm nowhere near that. I'm trying. How do I increase my faith? Well, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. As I focus my heart and my life on the word and I surrender myself on a daily basis, asking God to fill me with his Holy Spirit, I increase my faith. Then my passion for God turns into a self-sacrificing service for God. Wednesday night is not a sacrifice to me, guys. <laughs> it's just what we do as passion for God, right? What's a sacrifice, Pastor? I don't know. That's between you and the Lord. Coming on a Saturday to go door to door? Could be. Going bus visitation? Could be. Giving money that you don't have? You're just saying, God, help me. I need this money, but I'm giving it to you for missions. Yeah. Going to the mission field? Sure. Praying and asking God to do some special grace in someone's life to see them get saved? Yeah. See, increasing, and all I'm doing with this message tonight, guys, is try to encourage you that there's more out there in your, for your life than what you are now experiencing. The move from simply believing in God, hey, I'm saved, hallelujah, where most people stay. Let's develop our faith where we have a passion for God, which results in our obedience to God, no matter what. And then that is culminating in a complete surrender and sacrifice to Almighty God. And the works of Jesus that He did are actually what people see in us. Totally in His image. That's the power and the progression of faith. And I'll just stop with that. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Thank you for teaching us that faith is so important to you. And, and, and Lord, it's so vital to us to grow. And it's available. Lord, help us to give our hearts over to you, not only to believe the invisible to be visible, but to have passion for you and complete surrender and sacrifice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So Tuesday morning um, at 4 a.m., uh, my grandfather Floyd's faith became sight. Um, and he is now in heaven. Um, pray for Grandma Pearl. Um, they were married for 68 years. Um, praise the Lord for that. But you can imagine, I, don't, I haven't done 68 years of anything, <laughs> let alone with one person. So if you would pray for, pray for Pearl. Um, but uh, I know Grandpa is very happy to be in heaven. There's no doubt about that. Uh, any uh, praises or answers to prayer to start the evening with? Becca. Amen. Is this the rejection phone call?
For sure. So praise the Lord. We've been praying uh, for a few weeks um, that Becca would get an interview, and she got the interview, and then that Becca would get a job, and, uh, and then she had a phone interview. But praise the Lord that she has the job now. Pastor Davis. Uh-huh. Nice. Well, yeah. What, what could possibly go wrong? Even one guy with chainsaws. Chainsaws are super dangerous. And I don't say that about anything. For sure. So uh, pray for uh, Chloe's driving test tomorrow. It's going to be an entirely new design via phone. Pray that works out. And then pray, uh, set aside some time um, Sunday afternoon. Um, and pray uh, that uh, it'll be safe to go over and help Andy. Randy? Huh, well, that's awesome. Amen. So praise the Lord um, for guiding Evan and for somebody being honest and calling him and suggesting that he change the resume um, and that he's in line for a job with considerably more pay. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jess? Amen. 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 Praise the Lord for uh, for our new set of wheels. 2017 journey. Amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Uh, Miss Diane? Amen. So praise the Lord for $550 in savings on eyeglasses. Amen. Amen. Andy? Sure. Uh, so praise the Lord for a good wife and praise the Lord for good sales. Anybody else? Any prayer requests? Adam. Right. I'll sleep better if I just finish this thing. 
Uh-oh. I'm scared. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for guiding the guiding the bucket on the tractor while you dug. It's when wives, wives, you just say, you got this. It'll be fine. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, Miss Diane? Pray for Jesse um, as he works on Miss Diane's car. That God will give him wisdom, um, and it'll be able to be up and running again. Anybody else? Lou? Yeah, for sure. 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 So uh, pray for Lou's uh, co-worker who lost a son. Um, the funeral is going to be Friday. Just pay for a great grace. Um, I pray for Ron Hamilton. Um, he has dementia, and unfortunately his dementia is getting worse and worse. Um, and everything was good to go, at least from the medical side of the house being covered, but now um, they need extra wisdom and finances so that they can cover um, the care that he needs. Um, also, if you would, remember, pray for VBS coming up about two weeks from now. Um, so with that, if we would, let's break up for prayer.